So like I said, this is the Peace Corps Coverdale Fellows Q&A webinar panel for prospective students. And we are going to introduce today's panelists. In the first seat, we have John Brown. John is from Oklahoma and received his bachelor's in secondary education and mathematics from, the Oklahoma, from Oklahoma State University. After working as a high school math teacher for five years, John joined the Peace Corps where he served as an English education volunteer in Mozambique from 2015 to 2017. John joined the Coverdell Fellows program in the fall of 2018 to receive his MA in teacher education, specializing in math education. As a Coverdell Fellow, John works with Monzo Elementary School for his outreach assistantship. John will be continuing his assistantship at Monzo for his second year and will graduate in May 2020. Up next, we have Lena Perel. Lena is pursuing her MS in urban planning, focusing on affordable housing and community development. Originally from New England, Lena served as an English, as an education volunteer in Namibia from 2015 to 2017. Lena's work with youth leadership in Namibia has continued on in her outreach assistantship role here in Tucson, where she works with the Ironwood Tree Experience as their youth coordinator. During L Lena's first year as a planning graduate student, she participated in the Bank of America Low Income Housing Challenge, where her team placed second in California. Up next, we have Nick Beasley. Nick has a bachelor's in natural resources conservation from the University of Wisconsin and a master's in strategic leadership for sustainability from the Blekinge Institute of Technology in Sweden. After his time in Sweden, Nick joined the Peace Corps and served as an aquaculture's extension volunteer in Zambia from 2010 to 2012. His work experiences have focused on agronomy research and aquaponics. Nick's outreach assistantship in his first year was with the Prim Primavera Foundation and in the upcoming year, he will be working with the Water Resources Research Center. Nick will graduate in May 2020 with an MS in GIS technology. Finally, we have Keegan Krauss. Keegan is a dual degree, student, dual degree graduate student working towards his Master's of Public Health and an MA in Latin American Studies. Originally from Nebraska, Keegan worked as an English teacher in the Texas public school system before joining the Peace Corps, where he served as a Spanish literacy teacher in the Dominican Republic. After returning, he served as a community edu uh, educator at the University of Texas Medical Branch's Poison Center. He can tell you a lot about lead. Keegan has worked with the Center for Regional Food Studies as his outreach assistantship and co-authored the State of the Tucson Food Systems report for 2018-2019. So I'm gonna get our panelists up here. Let's see. Okay. And you guys are live. We also have Samantha joining us today, also served in Zambia from 2017 to 2019, interested in the School of Public Health Epidemiology program. Welcome, Samantha. All right. Say hi, guys. Hi. <laughs> um, for those joining, feel free to write in your questions in that chat box as they appear and we'll have time to read and respond to those questions as the session progresses. So, um, to get us started, panelists, can you speak about what your experiences have been like with the Coverdell program? Sure, I'll start. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, Nick. Experiences with the Coverdell program. Uh, very good. Um, you know, in addition to funding school and, and helping to Kind of get you situated um you know the service projects that we complete really help us help me uh, anyway like get introduced to tucson um all the different activities all the different areas um we went up to the sabino canyon uh, we do some things on fourth avenue um uh, working with the different organizations in town uh, just kind of helps you get introduced to tucson i guess in a way that you wouldn't normally get if you were just a student 
um, go, attending university and not really going out and seeing different aspects and different organizations of the community. Yeah, and kind of going off that for me, it was great to have a um, a community kind of here already when I got here moving across the country. It was nice to have like this RPCB community here in Tucson where you can make friends and not just in your program, but kind of in different schools and the university. It's basically like you already had like automatic friends here. <laughs> uh, government issued yeah. friends. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Okay. Um, Thanks guys. Uh, to broaden our conversation, aside from being a fellow, can you speak more about your experience with your academic department and or the Tucson community? I could start with that one. Um, I, I'm in the College of Public Health in the uh, Center for Latin American Studies. And um, outside of being a fellow, although it is kind of all intermeshed, I know. <laughs> Tucson is a very interesting place in that it has incredible opportunities to get involved. And I think the fellows program really plays off that well, but also the university here is incredibly involved in the community in Tucson, but also on the border. We're about an hour and a half away from Nogales, um, Mexico. And um, there's all kinds of stuff you can get involved with. In the College of Public Health, there's student organizations, um, there's service learning opportunities, and um, there's no lack of um, effort to get students involved in the community. I and I can only speak for my programs, but that seems to be, a, I think, a true broad statement about the university. Um, in the Center for Latin American Studies, uh, that, it, it's an interesting, it's not a department, it's a center, and so it kind of spreads across history, anthropology, geography, um, public health, it, it's, it's a thematic uh, focus. And so they have their hands all over campus, all over the, the, um, the, the city in the Southwest region, and so um, getting involved in human rights activism here uh, with asylum seekers is uh, a thing that you can do very easily here and it's very important and needed. Um, getting involved in um, border health, things that are happening on the border, uh, all kinds of stuff that are going on. A lot of um, First Nations populations, the university is connected to the, um, the public health systems that are currently working throughout the, the state in the First Nations. Um, and so there's, there's so much you can do here. And I think that's one of the strengths that, um, that this university specifically and with the fellows program provides. I'm in the College of Ed and uh, I just really liked with my program. Uh, I talked to my advisor, I emailed her uh, before coming here and just like working with her and being able to have a lot of freedom of taking different types of classes and exploring different possibilities uh, has just been really amazing for me because I don't, I, I know I want to stay in math education, but I don't really, I didn't really know what avenue I wanted to go down. And so it's just been really helpful and just really easy to work with them. And so I just had a really good, I've had a really good experience in the College of Education so far. Yeah, and I guess in my program, I'm in the urban planning program, and my program is a bit smaller, but it allowed me to create really good professional and personal relationships with my professors and the other students in my program. Um, my academic advisor is actually one of my professors, and she has been one of the best people um, throughout my first year, kind of helping me find internships, helping me decide what classes I'm going to take, kind of even looking out in the future about jobs after I graduate. Uh, yeah, and I guess my program, uh, it's a little bit, it's a little more non-traditional, I guess, in that it's, it's um, kind of condensed, uh, and then the courses are all at night, um, which is nice, because that sort of allows me to then work um, during the day and, and kind of do other things during the day, and just kind of, it helps me schedule my time better. Uh, so I think there are some programs here on campus, too, that are, that are more flexible like that. Um, and then with the GIS stuff, the, the resources here are awesome. Like we're using drones and really fun stuff out in the fields um, that, uh, you know, I think rivals any 
any university in the U.S. I mean, the U of A is a, is a top-notch research facility, has many research facilities on campus. So, um, yeah, that you have access to a lot of that kind of stuff too. Okay, thanks, all. Um, one question we get really frequently from prospective applicants is, but how do you balance that all? Um, a lot of fellows have, like Nick just said, work on top of being a full-time student. We also require our fellows to hold an outreach assistantship, which is kind of like an internship that's 10 hours a week. Uh, and we have volunteer requirements that our fellows participate in. So a lot of people, when they read over our website, ask, well, how do you, how do, you do it all? So would, would any of you have a response to how you balance it all? <laughs> I think it's definitely an individual type question because I mean, it just depends on each person, but uh, I'm, I have kind of a similar situation with Nick. It's like I have all my classes in the evening because they expect you to be teaching at the same time and then like you take class in the evening after school. So um, since I'm not teaching, that allows <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of time for me because <laughs> then I have uh, time to do the assistantship with 10 hours a week. And then I had a, I, a, an, another job, a work study last year, and then I'll have to continue with some job this semester. I'm still trying to figure that out. But um, yeah, it's just kind of, uh, yeah, like kind of getting into the group, I feel like, and kind of finding your own your own way of like finding that space within and having those that that day. I always like having like one day. For me, it always worked like last year, like Wednesday was my day just to like not have a lot of like work or like anything and like get caught up on schoolwork or get, you know, just have that one day to like just like kind of calm down and like refocus on what I whatever I need to get done at that moment. Nice. Thanks, John. Yeah, and I would say just keeping track and making sure you're like keeping, like have a good time management skills and making sure that, like I use my Google Calendar for everything, whether it's my outreach, my job, my classes, volunteer hours, other tasks I need to do. Um, that really helped me keep on track for my first year and definitely going into my second year. Um, I also think that making sure that you even I schedule time for myself in like my schedule since it's so busy to make sure that I do have that time for myself to like calm down and kind of relax because it does get really crazy and like you'll make it maybe halfway through the semester and you're like oh my god I need to take a break so it's always good to make sure you schedule that in yeah just kind of going off what these guys said um just finding time to do things I like to there's so many outdoor activities around here which Hiking is, I mean, it's 105 down here today, and think, uh, but if you get to like Mount Lemon or the Santa Rita's, which are an hour's drive, uh, it's 75, 80 degrees with low humidity. So, I mean, you just got to get out there. Um, golf, you can golf year round. I'm a big proponent of that. Um, yeah, just doing, I, I like outdoor activities, biking, hiking. Uh, there's all that kind of stuff to do in Arizona uh, within a very short distance. You can get out and do stuff. So um, just time to decompress is good. Yeah, I think you just need to prioritize. Um, depending, you know, everyone comes in from a different situation, but, you know, I think anyone applying to a graduate program has already reached a certain point in time management skills and professionalism. And so just got to kind of figure out what you can handle, what you can't handle and keep a main, like maintain a healthy balance. I think what everyone's, uh, my wife was just graduated, but she was also a fellow and this is my third year as a fellow and we have a three-year-old. And so um, that, I mean, it's all doable. It's definitely manageable, just as long as you can um, prioritize your, your time and keep a good schedule of self, self-help. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Um, one thing I did hear from Ryan Young, who's a Coverdell alum that I really liked and I just wanna share, was, uh, his quote was, being a fellow makes it so easy to do good things and socialize. You just sign up and show up when you're supposed to. <laughs> so, I liked the comment Lena made about having our Google Calendar because our office makes sure that you know when to be places and where to be places and that you have time to, time to set those aside. So, um, uh, Just a reminder to those who are joining, if you do have any questions that come up, um, feel free to type those into the chat box. Um, 
and then I'll move on to our next question for our panelists, which is what is one piece of advice for someone looking at the program or applying to the program right now that, that you would give? I would say contact uh, students in that program and talk to those programs. And if it's a fellow, that's even better because they'll be, if you're thinking about applying to the fellows program, they'll be able to give you an even better uh, understanding of what time looks like, who, what type of, which, prof uh, which professors are good to talk to you, how to communicate with them effectively. Um, yeah, students, great resource. Yeah, and I would say even like come to visit, like come here, meet with the different professors, meet with different students in your program, meet with the fellows here, just because um, you're not going to really know what it's like until you actually come and see it experience it too. Do you guys remember the application process and where you were at? Um, were you in Peace Corps during your application process? Were you back in the States? And if you remember anything, do you kind of remember what that was like for you? I was substitute teaching. So I just got back from service and I was substitute teaching in Oklahoma. I remember getting in everything late <laughs> because I didn't know. I came back. I was like, oh, I'll just figure it out when I get back from service. And I was like trying to like rush around. And so that was, was, was what I was going to say. Make sure you, you do have set plenty of time in advance to get everything in and like not do everything last minute because that obviously is not very good. <laughs> I think I started applying when I was in service, or like I started working on my application, and then I got back in October, and I think like finished up making, writing my essays and applying for my program. And so I think I applied like right when I got back. Yeah, I think I was out of Peace Corps for five years or so, something like that, six years before I applied. Um, and I was just kind of looking, the work I was doing got me into more GIS stuff, and I wanted to explore that more. and. Um, you know, U of A is a really good program, and they also have a very good Peace Corps program, so it just sort of fell into place. Um, but yeah, I, you know, going off of that, talking with people, uh, I was fortunate to come down and visit before um, I had done any application stuff. So I met with Georgia and, you know, spoke with her about, you know, just kind of all the ins and outs and all the subtle things, because um, everyone comes from a different perspective and a different position. And so trying to just communicate where you're at, um, figure a program that, that's right for you. And you have a future goal in mind with the program. Um, that shouldn't, personally, I think that shouldn't be the end. End goal shouldn't be the degree. The degree should be a tool to get to an end goal. Um, so I think having that in mind is, is really helpful um, because that, that'll just push you through it. Otherwise, um, yeah, it, having a target afterwards is, is good because that'll get you through this step to get to that next target. So I think doing the homework and really figuring out what you what you'd like to do, or at least have ideas. You know, if that changes throughout, so be it. But um, at least have a target beyond school in mind. Yeah, I was uh, I had when I started this whole process, my wife and I were still living in the Dominican Republic, and I had contacted the current campus recruiter who was Anna Steves Reese, who just happened to be in the program, the dual degree program that I wanted to be in, and she maintained contact with me over like two years after I got back, we both got back. And then because we didn't apply to grad school until two years later. And, uh, and she happened to finish right before we got here, but she sh suggested that we come down and visit. And we came and talked to Georgia and uh, met everybody. And um, it was a really good process. I, everyone here, and I don't know about all every other university, but everyone here is very nice. And, willing to just provide you their time to talk about programs and their experience, whether they're, from my experience, whether they're a return Peace Corps volunteer or not. Um, I think that's a great advantage that the U of A has. Awesome. Thanks all. Um, I'm gonna get my screen switched. Okay, so again, for any of our, um, those who are joining, feel free to add any questions in there, but we are wrapping things up. Um, I did want to point out who, who do you contact for questions that you may have about the Coverdell Fellows program. Um, that would be our office. 
if you have any questions about the application process, um, the benefits of joining and funding for the program are uh, program referrals, guidance on moving to Tucson, um, or orientation process, those questions should be filtered through our Peace Corps Covered All Fellows Office um, at grad.arizona.edu slash Peace Corps. Um, if you have questions about GRE or GPA requirements, um, teaching assistantships, any academic requirements for the program or faculty connections, those are going to go directly to the academic program coordinator. Um, you can find that information at grad.arizona.edu slash programs to find the correct program and the connections um, that you need there to talk to the academic program coordinator. Um, we'll give it just another minute if there are any additional questions, but I did want to point out that our application for the 2020-2021 school year will open up in November. Our priority application deadline is January 15th, and we highly recommend meeting that priority deadline. Um, the application for Coverdell, like I said, January 15th is our priority deadline. You do have to apply separately to your academic program, so be aware of those deadlines as well as you're preparing for um, the application process. If anything else comes up, again, feel free to contact our office. Our contact information is at grad.arizona.edu slash Peace Corps. And thank you so much to everyone who joined. We hope this has been informational and thank you so much to our panelists. Y'all are the greatest and we will um, post this webinar soon and it should be available on our website within the next week. Thank you all so much. <laughs>